Like many others at the moment, I'm in isolation, so I thought I'd take this time to make a video about the sorts of things you can do to your bike without having to have many spare parts or even specialist tools. This is Isolation Overhaul. Okay, so this video isn't just a bolt check, it's about addressing all the things on the bike that you actually neglect. First up, we're starting by taking the wheels off the bike. By taking the wheels off, it also enables you to check your disc rotor bolts are tight. They don't really rattle loose, but it is definitely worth checking while they're off. You've got some time on your hands, use it wisely. Check the cassette is sufficiently tight as well. They can rattle loose from time to time. And also check your wheel axles. Make sure that they're rotating smoothly. There's no play. Make sure there's no, no sort of coarseness to the bearings at all. If there is, make a note of these things. Don't just forget about it and pretend it's not there. You can't just sweep it under the carpet. It's going to get any better by itself. Next up, you want to be looking at your disc brake calipers. In particular, take the pads out, give them a bit of a clean. Uh, just use hot water for this. Don't use any sort of detergents or anything on the pads if you can help it. You can get dedicated disc brake cleaners and they work great, but for this, you don't need to waste that product on it. You just need to make sure they're clean. Um, make sure there's enough backing pad on there, make sure there's enough material hasn't worn all the way through to the backing pad. And if your pistons need pushing back into the calipers, then take care of this as well. Now, my front one actually does need pushing back in because I actually actuated the brake lever in the car recently um, when I was just putting the bike in without the front wheel on. Now you can get dedicated tools for this. Um, I'd recommend just using a simple tire lever. A nylon or plastic tire lever is fine because it won't scratch those pistons on the inside. Just make sure it's completely clean. Also, while the wheel is off the bike, gonna make the most of making sure it's nice and clean underneath the mud guard there, underneath the fork arch, all those areas that harbor mud. It's a good time to actually just inspect your fork seals as well. Just take the time to make sure your bike is in tip top shape. Now you might notice on the rear end of my bike, there's actually quite a bit more muck around the bottom bracket area here. I'm actually gonna take my cranks off. Now for doing this at home, you might just need an eight millimeter key for your particular cranks because they normally have a self extracting bolt on them. Not the case for my ones. I need a five millimeter Allen key just to release the cranks there. And I need a dedicated tool just to undo the preload cap. Uh, nice and simple, cranks come off. And as you can see, there's loads of gunk around the bottom bracket and around the back of the chain ring. You wanna make sure you address this because this will turn into creaks at a later date if it hasn't already. If your bike is creaking then, maybe now's the time to remove that chain ring completely, give it a complete clean and make sure the interface is completely clean with no grit or anything when you put it back together. Obviously, it's a great time now to get that torque wrench out that you've never used. And if you haven't got a torque wrench or you haven't used one before, now's the time to consider putting one on a shopping list because it's times like this when it gives you the opportunity to actually go around your bike. And you might be shocked that some of your bolts won't be anywhere near the correct torque setting. Now, if your bottom bracket is creaking, now's the time to take the bottom bracket out. Granted, you might not have the correct tool for that. And also yours might be a press fit too. Now, if yours is creaking and it's press fit, then well, you're down for a shock here because you really need to make sure the bottom bracket is completely clean. The bottom bracket shell is completely clean. Everything is straight so the bottom bracket can go back in as flush as possible. Now you're gonna need a press fit retaining compound for this. If you don't have any, don't do the job yet. Wait until you can get some stuff. Um, it's really, it's basically like a, an industrial thread lock, but it's designed specifically for press fit bottom brackets. Um, and the idea is it stops them from walking on the inside of the shell. That is when they just move around very slightly, just the tiniest bit as you're pedaling, and that translates into movement, which translates as noise in the form of creaking, and it can drive you mad. Uh, the only way you can get around press fit bottom brackets creaking is by installing them correctly from the beginning. Um, if your bottom bracket has been creaking for some time, you can remove it and try your best, but the chances are it will go back to creaking at some point. So just make that lesson learnt for the next one that you install. Okay, now next up, and this one's been winking at me for a while. Um, my saddle clamp or my seat clamp has been creaking slightly. Uh, that is the one that's at the top of your dropper post or your regular seat post on your bike. There can sometimes be a single bolt or in my case, a twin bolt. Uh, now these get all the crap that comes off your back wheel sprayed at them constantly. And if I take the saddle off, you'll see there's a whole manner of horribleness hiding away under there. Again, 
is very much an out of sight, out of mind. So now's the time to clean the whole lot. Make sure the rails are nice and stiff and they, there's no movement the way they go into the back of the saddle itself because they can creak from there if your saddle is particularly old or beaten up. Now, some people like to use thread lock on their bolts, but I'd actually just use a grease because of the fact that you want to be able to adjust your saddle. Um, you don't want it to sort of lock in position and the grease will stop it from creaking as well. Now, before you put your wheels back on, now's the time to check a few safety related things and also actually one that can give you or lead to poor shifting down the line. Now, take a look where your rear derailleur is bolted onto the frame. More than likely, yours will have a little adapter that bolts to the frame. Now, the bolts that hold that adapter to the frame, well, firstly, they're normally very small. We're talking like a two or a two and a half, maybe a three mil Allen bolt on them. And sometimes they come loose. That can create creaking because grit and muck can get behind it. But worse, just a tiny bit of movement there can translate to terrible indexing of your gears. Now, you might only notice this if just, I don't know, there's one particular gear, let's say four gears up from the bottom on your cassette, it's just a little slow in shifting. Now this is normally the culprit for that. If the rest of your gears are working fine, it tends to be something like the mount of the derailleur is loose, or the five mil Allen bolt that holds the derailleur onto this mount is loose. So check all of this. Now I would advise using thread lock on the bolts that hold the hanger on because they're subject to being bashed quite a lot when you take the wheel in and out of the frame. And of course there's lots of vibration down there as well. Also do yourself another favor and check your front quick release. I say quick release, it's normally a quick release through axle these days. If yours has one like this QR15 that I have on my bike, make sure that it's tight at the correct orientation. I see so many people now with the lever tightened in the wrong position and they've not been realizing that they can actually adjust it to the correct position and then adjust the tension. Once it's set, it stays that way. Now it depends what system you have. On this particular one, there's an Allen bolt in the back side here where the threads are, where it goes into the fork and you can nip up the tension there. You don't want it so hard, at least a mark in your hand, but it's a cam, so it should feel nice and firm and then just ease slightly as it goes over that. Again, this thing holds your front wheel in or your rear wheel. So make sure for your own sake that they're adjusted correctly in the safe position. Okay, so the last thing really is just to make sure your bike is clean everywhere. I referenced uh, silicon shine and sort of the shiny stuff earlier. I like to use a matte cleaner on this bike because obviously it's got quite a matte finish or a bit of a satin finish. It just brings it up that bit nicer. It looks quite good in the saddle as well, to be fair. But when I say clean a bike, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about getting the rags out and polishing it everywhere. I'm talking about all those little crime scenes. <sighs> it's all those little areas like underneath your brake levers. Uh-huh, are you a candidate just like me? Mine's filthy under there. The trouble is it looks clean from where I am when I'm riding. I don't need to worry about the other stuff. I think we're quite alike, aren't we, and things like that. Well, there we go. There's a whole bunch of different isolation related overhauling you could do with your bike. And of course, they don't really involve any specialist tools. So that means all of you could be doing some of these at home. Would you reckon, Chuck? Would you do that if you had a bike? I reckon you probably would, but uh, I think he just likes cuddling at the moment. Uh, on a serious note, if you guys have got any great suggestions for some more sort of isolation stuff, anything I can make from here or anything Henry can make from out and about as well, let us know in those comments because we do love doing this stuff. We love making bike videos. We love making things that can help you guys make your bikes better. Anything at all, if we can make it, let us know. Cheers for watching.